Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards and today I bring you a keyboard from a company I have not yet had a chance to review one of their products, Matthew Tech. Um, I've seen their name around for a little while on AliExpress. They recently, well in the last year or so, opened up their own web shop um, and they are also selling on Amazon US. I'm not sure about the other uh, regions, but I reached out to them and they were like, yeah, sure. Uh, but they picked out the keyboard. Um, I got to pick out the colors. And I, I think I went with white, but I'm not certain. So this is the Matthew Tech um, MK80, I believe. Yeah, MK80. It's a 75% with an arm. Isn't that a rare type of keyboard? <laughs> this is probably the most popular layout. Um, and we have... We all have the Satisfaction 75 from Canon T's to think. I actually think that they're starting on an R2, and it's supposed to start at 99 for, I believe, a polycarbonate case and go up even from there. But if you guys don't know about the Satisfaction um, 75, I think when it was on Group Buy, I want to say it started at 450. I've seen it on aftermarket sales for 750, $800, ridiculous. But a little tiny LED screen and the knob. Everybody kind of just said, mm, forget about the screen because it was a little harder back then. And a lot of people kind of uh, blamed GMK with the Pro, the GMMK Pro. A lot of people blamed GMMK at the time for copying it. And they said, oh, you shouldn't copy it. But after that, it, it was just a waterfall of keyboards with this particular um, layout. I've seen some with three, I've seen some with four though. I do know of one keyboard that has that one particular gap and I wonder, but for now, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have in the box. All right, before taking a look at the keyboard, let's see what's in the box. We have a user card. These are becoming extremely popular. Um, I do wish though, oh, okay. They do have quick support in Discord and manual driver. I was just about to say, I wish they would all include links to the manuals so that you can have them electronically. Um, I have a stack of manuals that I cannot find electronically. I do intend to scan them at some point. Uh, problem is, I mean, I can't just feed them in because some are booklets, some are pages that are fold out. There's just a lot of differences, but I want to upload them all and put them into a searchable, indexable database. I just don't know when that's going to be. I already have the domain for it, but hopefully I'll have some time. Uh, so we do have a link to go take straight to state. So we do have a QR code that will take you straight to their support in Discord. And then we have a QR code to download the manual and the drivers for this. That is a good thing to see. Thank you, Matthew Tech. Um, all right, so we see that we have how to connect with 2.4, Bluetooth, and wired, and the basic function combinations that are usually in there. Uh, 1, 2, and 3 are the Bluetooth slots, 4 is the 2.4, and function 5 is wired just in case it's it, sometimes, most of the times when you plug in, it'll go to wired, but sometimes it'll be stuck in a wireless mode, or at least I've seen it with a few keyboards. So FN5 will take you right there. Uh, shows you function to escape, as is mostly common. Uh, we'll do a reset, holding it down for three seconds. Brightness, function up and down, arrows, speed left and right. Uh, function alt changes you from Mac to Windows mode. Function enter changes the color switch and function back, backslash will do the RGB mode um, and function backspace will turn it off. All right, that's uh, pretty easy and it's actually fairly standard for what these um, keyboards have pre-programmed. In the box we have, oh, we have some extra accent keys. Oh, actually we have Windows accent keys, a cherry key, huh. So we got some die sub key cabs. While we have them, let's go ahead and just take a look at what, how good these are. All right, so these appear to be 1.3 millimeters of thickness. Not bad, not bad at all. As For me, if they're one and over, great. If they're less than one, they may as well be shining through. So we've got some decent Dysub PBT caps. We've got a handful of um, novelties. 
we have Windows uh, Mac specific keys, so I'm guessing we have the Windows keys already installed. And it does look like they are in the Arctic Arctic colorway. So always nice to get a few extra keys. Uh, allows you to do some customizations of your own and make the keyboard more your own. Now it looks like we do have some extra switches, which is a great thing. Uh, these appear to be Gator on Milky. The way that I've been using to determine if they're a pro or not is up to ping. No ping. So these are Gator on Milky Pros. I think KS3 is their model number. So we've got uh, some spare switches. Thank you for doing this. I think this is something that every keyboard manufacturer should do. If they have hot swap sockets and they're preloaded with switches, please include some extra switches. And then as always, as we do with practically every one of these boards, I have two boxes, one with cables, one with pullers, brimming. So if you need one. <laughs> so we've got your standard wire switch and keycap cooler, and then we have a, a nicely nylon braided, uh, one of the shorter USB-A to USB-C cables. And here we are with the Matthew Tech MK80. Um, Immediately, I'm getting a particular vibe. If you guys have been in the hobby for a little while, you might see the vibe that I'm getting. I will know as soon as I flip this over. Ah, yes. Hello, my old friend. This is a um, white-labeled version of the Key Duos NJ80. Uh, this is actually one of the first, not the first, but one of the first um, AliExpress purchases I made with mechanical keyboards, and it was the NJ80, and I had, I went through a whole little story, but um, that could be found in my videos if you look at it, but I actually have a really good working relationship with KeyDuos, but this is a keyboard that has been white labeled by at least three different um, brands, so off the bat, I have to say, I, I have a special place in my heart for the NJ80 because of what I went through and how Kidus came through for me. So, and I enjoyed using it. I did use it as my daily driver for quite some time. But let's check to see if everything is uh, stocked as, uh, as expected. Um, we do have the Milky Yellow Pros in here. Yep. We've got a steel plate. That's it's only my that's that's one of my sticking points with this now you you can buy aftermarket plates i did originally for my nj80 um i don't think i'm not sure if they're official or not but having a steel plate and even though this is a gasket mount you'll see that there is very little to no uh, flex and doesn't sound bad doesn't sound bad at all, but we are dealing with a keyboard that is going on three years now. So we ha we don't have a built-in IXPE. We don't have PET. Um, there are several improvements that have been made since then. We don't have a PC plate. So it's, uh, it's a little tough. I have a place in my heart for the NJ80, but it's because I've had it for quite some time. Um, and I've modded it many times, and it's still reliable, still works, has a great battery. I think when I first got it, I used it off battery for quite some time before I had to charge it, that I'd actually forgotten that I needed to charge it until it died out, but it was after like a month of good use. So, but I do wanna just get in here real quick. I'm gonna pop the knob off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the uh, USB dongle again. Manufacturers, brands really need to start um, labeling their USB USB dongles because it's it's not easy when you find one of these when you lose it. Um, this one has a good pocket, most likely not going to fall out, but it could. Or you could leave it plugged into your computer and forget and walk away. You need to put a label on here. Yes, I can make a little label and I can tape it, but who has the time? I'm going to open this up real quick. Uh, now this one, I actually prefer clips. Unless you're doing metal um, screw-ins, 
when you're when you're screwing a, a screw into a plastic stud, there's only a number of times you're going to be able to screw it in before that post just will no longer hold anything because you're the the screw will little by little just wear away at the threads and then there just won't be any threads. So I knock on wood, I haven't I haven't broken a clip yet, but I have been working with uh, electronics and and things made in this manner since the 90s, um, since they started becoming popular. So one of the things that I know that helps to prevent breaking any clips is to make sure that you don't pull it off until all the clips have been disengaged. Now this one is one of the tighter ones, so it's going to take a little bit of work. Now sometimes, I don't know, I mean, with this one we have to pull off the keys because the inside of the clips are right here and that can kind of help. But sometimes you have to go on one side and go on the other. So I was having a little difficulty and then I completely forgotten that there's two screws here. <laughs> I can't believe that I've forgotten, but it has been. That's how long it's been since I've opened up my NJ80. So let's go ahead and take out these two screws. So you can actually see the little bit of plastic that comes off. It's exactly what I was talking about earlier. These screws will not allow for too many unscrewings. All right, now, oh, I noticed this is MK80 Max. So I wonder what Max gives us. All right, we still have one clip engaged. That's why we don't want to pull it off until all the clips are disengaged. Now we can pull the top off, nice and easy. Now, to just, you know, show how much of older of a design that we're looking at, we have the, uh, the USB-C port is on the PCB. Now, yes, it does have these uh, uh, strips of foam, I'm, well, not foam, these are strips of silicone actually. They don't have any give whatsoever, but we're dealing with a steel plate and there's really no room for this to move. So let me disconnect the battery here real quick. That way. All right, and then we can take a look at the battery here below. We have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery that does look like a newer battery um, than the uh, on the original NJ80s so and I believe they were 3,000 though they might have been 4,000 all right so here we can see this one actually passed QC in um, well depending on how they did the date 23 either March 4th or April 3rd um, but yeah we have your uh, Standard kale hot swap sockets. We've got six screws attaching the PCB to the plate. We have south facing LEDs. We have some pads here. It does look like the screw in, or the um, does look like the plate mounted stabilizers are very well attached. Does not look like they're going anywhere, so the tolerances are good. And we can take these pads out if we need to remove them and clean them up, but for the most part, Those stabs actually sound pretty good. Now, as it's been a minute since I modded or done anything to my NJ80, um, I will come back to this one and do a mod. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a great keyboard for someone that wants to start out, you know, learning about how to build keyboards because it's pretty sturdy. It's a, It, it has a good view of the design of how a PCB is. I'm surprised they're still making it um, in the same manner, uh, well, around a year ago or so. But because at this point, uh, it needs to have a daughter board. It needs to have better gasket mounting. It needs to have a better plate because 
at a much lower price point than this one sells for, that's where it needs to be. I mean, don't get me wrong, because I don't have any hate for um, tray mount, but it's the easiest of and the cheapest of. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, I prefer a keyboard that actually gives me options. Hey, you can do tray or, you know, with a rubber O-ring, you can do gasket, you can do plate, you can do top. There's so many different mounting styles. Uh, and I just believe that this keyboard, while it's a decent keyboard, it's no longer uh, in the market as the way it is. It's no longer a, a keyboard that should be in the same range as keyboards with similar and better features and upgraded design methodology. So I've gone ahead and connected that back up. But so yeah, we have these silicone strips down at the bottom and the top, but as you can see, I'll put them on top of that. Oh, gotta get the USB port in first. Then we can put it. Alright. No matter how hard I press down, it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. So it's like they're kind of pointless. Plus down here at the bottom, if you see the bottom of the plate has a little bit of an edge that goes down. And that just kind of locks into place. I mean, it has the space to move, but it isn't going to move. The whole case is moving. It's, just, it's not going to flex. So, I mean, that's definitely one thing to consider. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it real quick. Let's go around the entire perimeter, make sure all the clips are engaged. And we can flip these feet up. We'll go ahead and screw these screws back in. And we do have two sets of feet, so we will have a total of three typing angles. So in this build, we have a gold knob, which quite honestly, in my opinion, does not match the arctic theme at all um i mean white blue black even a gray a silver i think would have looked better with this than gold i don't see where the color combinations are now as far as the key goes i mean the key caps are are not that bad um they aren't what you would say the the most cleanest of keycap legends but i have seen much worse um there's just a little bit of uh the uniformity isn't perfect but again this is on a pre-built so let's go ahead and plug it in real quick and see what we've got all right we got some pretty good light effects let me turn the lights down so we can actually get a glimpse of them So the controls are very similar, or exactly the same, for changing the RGB effects and then changing the single colors. Leave it on this white blue. So basically we have a another copy of the NJ80. Now is this a good keyboard? Yeah, it's a nice keyboard. It's absolutely usable, but in today's market it's not comparable to other boards in this price range from amazon for 99 dollars yes it's preloaded and it is it does have gator on milkies uh milky pros um because they're lubed and it has a decent set of die sub switches but when 99 dollars can get you a rainy 75 when less than $99 can get you a Sugar 65 or a Leobog High 8 or High 75, which gasket mount, PC plate, PET mod, IXPE mod, um, much better stock sound than this. I 
I mean, it's not awful, but it's not it's not comparable to what you can find for ninety nine dollars in today's market. So I just get the impression they're trying to move some old stock, uh, which I mean I can appreciate it being in that situation. But if this keyboard was closer to the fifty dollar mark, I'd say, hey, great, you know, it's a good board to, you know, you've got switches, you've got keycaps, you can play around with modding on it, um, you've got wireless capability, but it's it's not a hundred dollar keyboard in my opinion, because what can be, I mean, when you can get a Mons Geek, I mean, it's a Mons Geek M3, pre-built, fully loaded with kit, switches and keycaps, is $129, and this is fully aluminum, this is a solid, oh, this is the M3W, so this is the wireless version that actually comes, you know, Wi-Fi just like this. But it's a fully aluminum keyboard, and it can be bought preloaded for $129. It's hard to justify paying anything over $40, $50 for this. I just don't see it. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the Matthew Tech MK80 Max, or a Ducaro VN80, as well as a white-labeled key duos nj80 it comes with gateron milky pro switches and four extras as well as a set of cherry die sub pbt in the arctic colorway with some extra keycaps it does have a gasket or sandwich mount steel plate it comes weighing in at 1020 grams it has a 4000 milliamp hour battery the chin of this keyboard sits at 21 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 30 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 6 degrees. Raising the first set of included flip-out feet will take the keyboard to a height of 36 millimeters for the back and change the angle of typing to 9 degrees. Using the final set of flip-out feet will take the back height to 42 millimeters and providing for an 11 degree typing angle. This keyboard manufacturer retails for $99.99. All right, so I went and took a look at the software real quick. First, I went to the site to download it, and the first thing I noticed is that it's HTTP. It's not HTTPS. Um, it's very slow, but for those who don't know, basically it means that it's not secure. So anything you do on that website, anyone can see anyone can access um, with a little bit of technology know-how. Wireshark, and they'd be able to see what you're doing. Um, they could also do a man-in-the-middle attack. It's just not secure. But they have several versions of this. As there has been several versions of the NJ80, the VN80, the TH80. I mean, it goes by so many different names. Though when I downloaded the software, I was like, that logo seems familiar. Then I installed it, and lo and behold, it's Ducaro, so they don't even have their software named to their company. Um, I mean, they did white label it and pay for their own stickers and box. They didn't bother to get the software white labeled. Um, in the software, we do have the ability to, for some reason, we can't change the press of the knob, but we can change the direction that it goes or what, what it does when you turn it right or left. But, and it also has a function layer, but you can't do anything to the knob in the function layer. And there's several preset keys that you can't change. Um, it does have per key RGB and it has macros and it has some sort of testing section that I wasn't able to figure out. Anyway, um, I, uh, I guess I should have gotten it from the pictures, especially from this gap that it was one of these, uh, well-known boards but uh, this keyboard first came out i want to say in late 2020 if i'm not mistaken um it was a good keyboard then but even back then um i purchased the nj80 i want to say fully loaded for 89.99 um years ago so now this is the max it has 4000 milliamp hour where the original had 3000 milliamp hour and it doesn't have the uh the charging indicator that that was 
kind of annoying. It still isn't the one I got. It's, it's no big deal, but the uh, anytime you have it plugged in, if the battery's not 100%, then the control, um, the, the light behind the control turns red and stays red. But that's neither here nor there. This is a... Um, <sighs> I just can't recommend it at this price. Like I said, if it was 50 or below, I mean, when you take the switches and the keycaps into consideration and that you have a wireless keyboard that is, you know, somewhat customizable, all right. You know, I can deal with the steel plate. I can deal with the fact that, you know, it's just another rebrand three, four-year-old, um, yeah, basically a four-year-old keyboard. The design was great when it first came out. It just, it doesn't hold up. Um, I mean, I just, yes, I just bought another GMK87 uh, with a screen, with a knob. Yes, it is a bare-bone keyboard, but I only paid $22 for it. I mean, even adding the switches, which 20 bucks, 25 bucks at the high end. And then a set of keycaps, another $25, we're still well below the price of this one. And we have a modern keyboard that has, though it's not fully complete, it is a VIA programmable. Um, so I I can't, at this price, I can't recommend it. Um, it seems disingenuous to me that they're selling this keyboard at this high of a price. Unfortunately, I believe that there's people that are going to buy it. Um, now, is this better than your membrane keyboard? Absolutely. But are you getting your value for your money? No, not at, not at $99. This isn't going to satisfy that because it's, it's four years old. It has a steel plate. It's not really gasket mounted. It doesn't really allow you to have any sort of flex. I mean, there is no flex whatsoever. This is a... Nothing. And, I mean, as you can see, the port isn't moving at all. Why? If it had any flex, you'd break off the port. So those strips are there for no reason because they don't provide any flex, which is the whole point of having a softer typing feeling as well as more consistency going up and down the rows. So I... Um, there are plenty of 75% out there. I mean, the fact that I can go and get a Leo Bog from AliExpress, which is a 75% with a knob, aluminum, for less than this, should say everything. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about it, uh, please go ahead and ask. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them down below. Yeah, I do my best to answer all questions that are posed, and I'm always on budget keeps as well as our dis discord server so until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on